Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips and uh, today we're going to talk about dietary fat and cancer. And the reason I want to do this, two reasons actually, one is that the debate about dietary fat just continues. I mean, you've got people saying butter is back and others claiming that everybody has to eat an ultra low fat diet. And it's just, it's very difficult to argue against fat restriction for people with advanced coronary artery disease after reviewing the outcomes for, uh, for example, Dr. Esselstyn's um, patients. He's followed them for 31 years and compliant patients have virtually no events, non-compliant patients, 62% incidence of events. I mean, it's really striking. So I don't think you can ignore um, the idea that a low-fat diet, a very low-fat diet in case of an Esselstyn diet, really benefits certain populations of people. But what about diet and cancer? A lot more is written about diet and heart disease and diet and coronary artery disease than diet and cancer. And um, one of the, another reason, um, in addition to all the debate that rages on about it, is I'm teaching a course this summer on diet and cancer. And, um, and so this issue of fat has come up in our discussion discussions and, and uh, so I thought it would be good to share with the public. I think cancer is a really feared um, diagnosis and if there are things that you can do to avoid it, I'm sure you want to know. So what about dietary fat and cancer? Well, um, does a high fat diet cause cancer or contribute to it? Can a lower fat diet increase the risk of survival, decrease the risk of recurrence? Well, let's take a look. Study results are inconsistent. That's the first thing. But one of the reasons why study results are inconsistent is, um, is there are three very common shortcomings that have to do with study design. And, and so what happens is people who continue to advocate for higher fat diets continue to pick studies that are extremely flawed as reasons to, or as, as studies to support their stance. Now let me give you some examples. The first issue is that in many studies, the individuals in the low fat group are really not eating a low fat diet and sometimes there is no meaningful difference between the high fat and the low fat group. Determining that fat intake makes no difference when the high fat group is eating a diet with 40% of calories from fat while the lower fat group is eating a diet with 35% cal of, of uh, calories from fat. It's like saying that speed doesn't matter in automobile accidents because the same number of people die in collisions where people are going 80 miles an hour as people going 90 miles an hour. Fat and speed do matter, but you have to have meaningful reductions in both to have a different outcome. Another problem is that there are so many studies where food intake is self-reported, and it's often self-reported retrospectively. Now, there are problems with self-reported data in terms of reliability, and one example I can cite, an analysis of NHANES data, which is gathered by the USDA, has shown that based on the information submitted by subjects, most people in the United States of America are not consuming enough calories to maintain their current weight. Now, with two-thirds of the population experiencing being overweight or obese, I think we can safely say that any data showing that most people don't eat enough food is probably flawed. Um, but it goes even further. Many times these studies have asked people to report what they used to eat or their dietary pattern. And so uh, I always use myself as an example. I'm probably more aware than most people of what I eat because it's a significant part of the business that I'm in. But if you ask me to write down what I had to eat last week, I would be hard pressed to tell you. Even yesterday, I'd have to think long and hard about it. So I don't necessarily think we get good data. Last but not least, in many studies, dietary fat is evaluated, but there is no consideration given to total animal food intake. Now, why is this important? A lot of people lower their fat intake by eating, for example, fat-free dairy products, egg whites, and chicken breast. But this results actually in a higher intake of animal protein, even while fat intake is decreasing. Studies have shown a clear connection between high intake of animal protein and cancer. For example, European studies have shown that vegetarians had an almost 40% lower risk of developing cancer than meat eaters. And studies of American Seventh-day Adventists show that those who eat more of a plant-based diet had a much lower risk of cancer than those that ate more animal foods. Now, one of the reasons why a lot of us are fond of citing studies that have involved Seventh-day Adventists is that um, they all share certain um, lifestyle patterns. For example, it's rare that you meet a, an Adventist who's a practicing Adventist who smokes or drinks alcohol or consumes caffeine. So it makes it a lot easier to evaluate differences in their dietary patterns, and they're significant, ranging from Adventists who eat mostly a plant-based diet to Adventists who eat a pretty good amount of dairy and eggs and that sort of thing. Um, in any case, the bottom line is that some people are showing lower fat intake but not 
not necessarily healthier dietary patterns. So it doesn't look like their cancer risk is lower, and it wouldn't be if you don't make adjustments for these other things. Now, in spite of these limitations, there are some studies that have shown that a higher fat diet increases the risk of cancer. Um, one that I'll point out is a review that was done by scientist Ken Carroll, PhD. He reported that animal studies have shown a relationship between intake of all types of fat and cancer risk. For example, in one study, it was very similar to the kinds of studies that Dr. Campbell was doing at Cornell. Um, you use a cancer-causing agent and then feed a varying diet. In this case, the cancer-causing agent was DMBA, which has been shown to cause tumor formation. And then these uh, rats were fed a diet low in fat or high in fat, 20% of calories to my corn oil or coconut oil. And um, in this case, the rats fed the, high di the diet high in corn oil developed about twice as many tumors as those fed the, lo fed the lower fat diet. And this finding was consistent with previous studies that showed that high fat diets increased mammary tumor tumors in rats and mice, and studies that showed a very high correlation between dietary fat and breast cancer mortality in humans. Carroll also reported that studies in which polyunsaturated fat intake reached only 4 to 5 percent of calories caused increases in both the incidence and size of tumors in a dose-dependent manner. And actually, it carried the, the, the effect carried over for all kinds of fats. And similar experiments conducted with monounsaturated fats, think olive oil, uh, same thing, appeared to promote mammary tumors uh, just as much as polyunsaturated fats. So it seems that dietary fat from all sources uh, is a potential um, uh, po very powerful cancer promoter. Pancreatic cancer is more prevalent in populations consuming a westernized diet with a high intake of saturated fat from both meat and dairy products, and research shows that there is a direct connection between dietary fat and the risk of pancreatic cancer. Researchers followed about a half a million people for an average of six years, and during that time they were able to evaluate the risk of that, looking at the patients who, got, um, who developed pancreatic cancer and looking at their dietary habits, they figured out that overall patients consuming the highest amount of saturated fat had a 36% higher rate of pancreatic cancer. The study also showed that intake of total fat, monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fat mattered too. And this is a quote from the study that I'll read to you. We observed positive associations between pancreatic cancer and intakes of total saturated and monounsaturated fat overall, particularly from red meat and dairy food sources. In other words, consuming better fats doesn't make a big difference. Eating a diet low in all fats is what makes a difference. There are differences in breast cancer rates in countries in which people consume a high fat diet versus those in which people consume a lower fat diet. For example, the Japanese diet derives only 15% of calories from fat, while the average American is consuming 35% of calories from fat, most of it saturated fat from animal foods. The incidence of several types of cancer, including prostate, lung, breast, melanoma, bladder, kidney, and thyroid is significantly lower in Japan than in the United States. And this is in spite of the fact that, and this surprises some people, that there's a pretty high smoking uh, incidence of smoking in Japan. Um, this disparity in cancer rates is a major contributor to the fact that the average life expectancy in Japan is five years longer than in the United States, and in Okinawa that disparity is even bigger. Several other studies have shown differences for many types of cancer due to differences in dietary patterns in different countries. One study looked at the incidence of 27 different types of cancer in 23 countries and determined that meat consumption increased the risk of colon cancer and fat intake increased, increased breast and uterine cancer risk. There are several mechanisms by which a higher fat diet contributes to increased risk of cancer. Higher estrogen levels increase the risk of breast cancer. There are many causes of abnormally high estrogen levels, which include dietary fat. When eating a high fat diet, levels of plasma estradiol increase, and when the diet converts to lower fat, estradiol levels come down. Another study showed that vegetarians eating a lower fat diet excrete between two and three times more estrogen than in their feces than women who eat an omnivorous diet. And also that omnivores have higher plasma levels of estrogen and estradiol, 50% higher in fact than vegetarian women. Another issue with fat intake is its impact on immune function. Higher fat intake from fish, animal, and vegetable sources can lower immune function, and an underfunctioning immune system both increases the risk of cancer and decreases the chance of survival. Yet another mechanism is that a high fat diet increases the production of bile acids, which in turn irritate the colon and increase the risk of colorectal cancer.
1988, the U.S. Surgeon General issued a report on the topic which stated, and this is a quote, Indeed, a comparison of populations indicates that death rates for cancers of the breast, colon, and prostate are directly proportional to estimated dietary fat intake. In other words, one of the best tools for preventing cancer is to eat a low-fat plant-based diet. Adopting a low-fat diet after a cancer diagnosis can improve survival odds. According to a new study, women who consumed a low-fat diet, meaning 20% or less of calories from fat, after a diagnosis of breast cancer had a significantly lower risk of dying of breast cancer than women who ate a higher-fat diet. The study included almost 49,000 women, 16 years of follow-up, and in addition to de decreasing fat intake, the women in the intervention group um, increased their intake of fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, and lost weight. So you get a lot more benefit when you replace those fat calories with the calories from plant food. The weight comes off, and of course those, those um, fruits and vegetables and foods like that, those plant foods have protective qualities. Other studies have shown that women who reduce fat intake to 20% of calories have a 24% lower risk of breast cancer recurrence than women who continue to consume a high fat diet. Women eating lower fat diets live longer after diagnosis than women who consume more dietary fat. Yet another study showed that the adoption of a low-fat plant-based diet decreased PSA levels in prostate cancer patients. Researchers reported that in vitro studies showed that serum from patients eating a low-fat diet inhibited prostate tumor growth in vitro by 70%, while serum from patients eating a normal, air quotes around that, what's normal these days, and higher-fat diet inhibited growth by only 9%. That's a pretty big difference, 70% versus 9%. Now, aside from these studies, and there are many, many more like these um, that, that do not have the methodological errors that I've mentioned before, there are two other issues to consider. Higher fat diets increase the risk of both obesity and type 2 diabetes, both of which increase the risk of cancer. And I won't regurgitate all that information here because there are art other articles posted in the Health Briefs Library that specifically address this. I think about 80% of pancreatic cancer patients are diabetic at the time of diagnosis. So a strong case can be made for eating a low-fat diet my definition is 15% of le or less of calories from fat as part of a strategy to prevent and potentially to be used as a tool for recovery from cancer. So while we'll continue to see people saying butter is back and fat doesn't matter, the truth of the matter is entirely different. Butter is not back and fat does matter. At least it matters if you want to live to a ripe old age and literally live until you die instead of have lots of degenerative diseases and take lots of drugs and have procedures and hang out with doctors a lot. If you don't want to do those things, low-fat plant-based is your best option. All right, that's all for today. It's all for the week. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it, and I will be back to you next week with more news.